Top of the morning to you laddies. My name is Jack Septic Guy. Jack, you look so different. I got buccal fat removal. Okay, relax. I've been I've been looks maxing. All right, give me a break. Nah, but today we're talking about something I think is remarkably interesting. You know how saying, you know, the word basically ruins the career of any influencer who isn't allowed to say it? Imagine the opposite of that. Imagine a literal nobody getting a career because they said the forbidden word. All fucking righteous fucking n- that's the story of Lily Gaddis, and I want to talk about this person because her rise and fall took place in the span of a week, got famous overnight, a lot of hatred overnight, but then eventually she got a huge platform of people who supported her because people didn't like her, but then the people who liked her because people didn't like her end up not liking her again. It's a very interesting story, one that I want to get into today with you guys, but if you enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hey. I like it when you like that button. Hey, I'm a landlord, and whenever you like the video, I raise the rent on a single mother who's struggling, so please be sure to leave a like on the video. Okay, no, but the incident that started this all was Lily posting a video on TikTok on June 9th, 2024, which was her venting about relationships while cooking, and what made this video so interesting is she randomly, in the middle of this innocuous rant, decided to just drop this off dead. Nigga. I'm sick and tired of all girls getting blamed, or like guys, certain guys, thinking that all girls are gold diggers. I don't know if it's because you get your information from those street interviews in like Miami at 3 a.m. outside of a nightclub. Yes, they are probably gold diggers, but that's the exception. I'm the rule. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to broke ass and they don't care. We don't give a fuck about your money. I couldn't care less about your fucking money, okay? That was the clip that started this all, okay? Some random mom-looking figure just drops the soft day in the middle of seasoning her chicken. Not something you see every day while scrolling TikTok, especially in this current climate. Well, she did end up deleting this video sometime before June 11th, but she did double down on this video and her use of the word in this video on Twitter, which features a clip of the late Andrew Breitbart saying war. So a recent video of mine seems to have um, upset members of a certain community. And it, this, um, all the backlash just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that, I still couldn't find a care. You're going to call us racist. You're going to call us potential Timothy McVeigh's. Fuck you. Pretty sure that's copyrighted music, so you get minus 10 million aura points and based points for that. She also doubled down in her comment section, as you can see here. Married to who? You heard me. Anyway, regardless of what you think about this so far, one thing you can't deny is this is something you don't see every day. Whether you think this is awesome, challenging the status quo, we got some counterculture taking place right here, or you think it's forced edginess, attention baiting, general cringe, or even racist. One thing you can't deny is, like I said, it's not something you see every day, so there is a reason this went viral. Well, this video went viral on Twitter, as you can imagine, and it got exposure to all different corners of the website. Black Twitter got their hands on this, and there was plenty of different reactions. You had some guys saying, I could fix her. No, you can't. Okay, I love I love when people say I can fix her. It's like, let's be honest, brother, you're not Bob the Builder. This Lego set doesn't come with instructions. You, got, you, you can try your best. I don't know if you're equipped. Personally, I left my cape at home. I'm not trying to save that bitch, but hey, you had some black guys saying I can fix her. But again, of course, there were also people who were genuinely infuriated by this, citing white privilege, saying how this is unacceptable. You should never say stuff like this, even if it's in your own home and it's not to someone. The word itself is evil. All that sort of discourse was taking place, but there was enough genuine genuine outrage over this clip and people were angry enough over the TikTok to get her place of work to fire her and announce so publicly on an Instagram post published June 11th. Roth of the Carolinas. Now, I don't know what this actually is. I don't know where she works, but they had issued a statement because this TikTok had went so viral. We at the Roth of the Carolinas want to address a recent incident that has caused concern and upset among our stakeholders. A newly hired employee made inflammatory remarks on social media that do not align with the values and beliefs of our company. We want to make it clear that these sentiments are not representative of our organization and we do not condone or support such behavior. As soon as we were made aware of the situation, we took immediate action to pull the employee from her assignment, which is not directly with any client of ours. And the employee in question is no longer with our company. We are owned and operated by African-American female and immigrant-owned business and handled the situation as quickly as we could. We want to assure you that we are committed to fostering a diverse, inclusive, and respectful work environment where all individuals are valued and respected. We understand the importance of upholding our principles of equality and understanding, and we will continue to strive to create a culture of respect within our organization 
We appreciate the support and trust of our community. We are dedicated to earning back any confidence that may have been shaken by this unfortunate incident. Now, at this point in time, if you're Lily Gaddis, you might be very upset. You might be unsure of your future, disappointed, feeling hopeless. It might be looking rough. It's over, some would say. You just lost your job. You're getting death threats on Twitter. The only people who seem to support you are individuals with questionable racial fetishes. You should not seek sex because if you seek sex, you will become gay because sex is a gay act. Your career's in the dumps in this already tumultuous economy. It's not looking too good. But what if I told you her Twitter account where she had posted that response ended up gaining over 120,000 followers in the past month. Not only that, but many mainstream right-wing influencers on Twitter seemingly in unison started supporting her. Accounts tweeting out their support include the Hodge twins, Mark Dice, Harrison Smith, the right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. And I meme, therefore I am. These shoutouts from right-wing accounts on Twitter garnered her a brand new career opportunity to speak on issues like cancel culture, freedom of speech, platforming responsibility, and issues regarding the current social and political climate. Now, if you ask for my thoughts on it, I think this is sort of an overcorrection. Ultimately, whether she got fired or not is up to the discretion of the higher-ups at her workplace. But for her to basically have a career because she lost her career is kind of ironic and a little strange. I don't, I, I don't know. I find that to be kind of silly. I guess I can see why it's kind of cool. Like, the thing that gets you fired is also the thing that promises a new career for you on the internet, which is, it's, it's definitely interesting. It does sort of fall in line with the whole cancel, cancel culture thing, but whatever. Now, things started to look promising. You know, she was down in the dumps, but she might be looking good now. You know, she has all these new followers, this new right-wing audience. How's this gonna go? Well, many dissident right-wing Twitter accounts were very skeptical of the viewership and how much support she was gaining. The choir of conservative pundits who spread her videos in support seemed inorganic. Not to mention, it's very common for conservative pundits to put traditionally liberal figures on a pedestal just because they share one right-wing talking point. Many accounts also accuse her of being Jewish due to her nose, which she denies. We can see here we got um, some interesting people in the replies. Yes, I have a big nose. No, I'm not a Jew. And she does frequently poke fun at those who claim she is Jewish. Mossad watching y'all call me a Jew and missing the real operatives. Well, her second fall took place because of a video she posted on June 10th, which drew skepticism due to her insulting Mark Zuckerberg and Anthony Fauci as quote never been laid in high school. So all those nerds in high school like the weird theater kids and the anime people and ugh you know who I'm talking about, the people we didn't hang out with. So they've grown up now, and they're the ones making the laws. They're the Mark Zuckerbergs. They're the Fauci's of the world, the fucking nerds. Those fucking dorks that never got laid in high school, and they've got a major chip on their shoulder against the normies. That's why you see all these fat-ass fucks making laws. Oh, you can be obese and anorexic. Okay, sure. Some comments said that this video was promoting underage fornication, while many anime profile pictures retaliated as she implies anime people were losing. She would get exposed for her socials on Instagram, as well as a brand she involved with named Baby Bits, which the URL for no longer works. She posts herself with her child frequently on both Instagram accounts. She also posted a video of Nick Fuentes supporting his in-person event in Detroit, AFPAC 4. <laughs> Lily would then post a photo of her at the event with personalities such as Sneeko, Jake Shields, and Dr. Lupus. These figures are controversial amongst the right wing, in part due to their anti-Israel sentiments, but also their general spurgy behavior. She also tweeted about doing shrooms at AFPAC 4, which I think is so strange. Why would you go to an America First convention, you know? This is where people are talking about the future of the nation. They're trying to restore the American identity, close the border, reduce taxes, make America great again, and you're there getting high on mushrooms. Seems pretty incongruent. 
congruent with the message of the movement. Well, anyway, she posted this video, my take on Turning Point and AFPAC, and then someone in the replies goes, you did drugs and hooked up with someone. I did shrooms, but I did not hook up with someone. I saw you two walking back to the hotel, and you looked very cozy together. I'm gonna be honest with you, she's like a very untalented speaker, so I'm not even gonna play this clip and subject you to her yapping, but... All right, y'all, so I just got off my flight, and I'm headed home from uh, Turning Point and AFPAC, and I thought I'd get on here and like, give a little rundown of what my take was on the whole thing. First we went to Turning Point. I thought Turning Point was kind of lame, to be honest. It was very low energy. We weren't there for that long anyway, but I mean, it was cool. Like I'm not, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. Everybody there was really sweet. We met a lot of solid people, like good working, hardworking American people, you know, my people. And then we went to AFPAC and it got, you know, it got canceled and whatever. A lot of people are mad at me because I'm kind of, they think I'm really like hating on the, what, the America first. I'm not kissing your ass. Like I'm just gonna to give an honest opinion of what I thought and my opinion on the whole America First thing is obviously that's the direction we need to go because the people's getting fucked over by the government. We're getting fucked over in all these foreign wars. We've got foreign powers controlling our government and stuff. So obviously that's all terrible. So the guiding principle behind the America First is perfect. My critique is it's so fringe, it's so clicky, it's so niche that you're excluding a lot of normal people. You know, most people don't know who Nick Fuentes is. Like, if you ask the, like an everyday person who's pretty conservative, they don't know who Nick Fuentes is. You've got a good message, so you just need to figure out how to, like, get more people involved, you know? And I think you have to do that by you gotta stop being so clicky. Like, if you wanna be a click and you wanna have your little frat, like, that's cool, but you're not really gonna make any difference in the country in the long run because it's fringe and it's a very, very small group of people. And while she seemed to try to invade the fringe of the right wing, the dissident right, the Nick Fuentes America First side of things, they didn't like her that much because of her use of drugs, her allegedly having a mixed race child, the Mark Zuckerberg comments about not getting laid as a lot of these people are incels, and the fact that she frequently posts videos antagonizing men for not dating, impregnating, or marrying women. Similar to the Mark Zuckerberg thing, we got a clip like this. We got a problem in this country and it's people not getting married, not putting a ring on it, um, and not having kids. But conversely, we also have a problem with a lot of women voting and they're voting Democrat, they're voting leftist. If you want to fix that problem, you have to wife these women up. Like we have to stop being in cells and stop, um, stop going up to girls and oh, no, girls are all just bitches. Oh, they're all just whores. Let's not even go and ask them out. Stop being a pussy and put a fucking ring on it. If you want to fix the, if you want to fix the voting problem, that's how you fix it, motherfuckers. Like, anybody who votes leftist, they're single women with no kids and whatever. What does Lady Gaga know about Polaroids? What does Lily Gaddis know about politics? Like, actually nothing. This person just got famous for a TikTok where she rips the soft day and now we think she's some sort of pundit. She, we think that she's some sort of intellectual proprietor. Like, this is ridiculous. And while it is true that, you know, women in relationships tend to be more conservative than women who are single, just getting into a relationship with a woman will not boom, instantly change her politics. And also a lot of guys won't date women who have different political leanings than them for a lot of reasons. But yeah, this whole antagonizing men thing is uh, not going over too well with the Groypers for sure. She was also said to be a guest on Primetime with Alex Stein and the live stream bot is now private on both YouTube and Rumble, which is unusual for Alex Stein's show. He usually keeps these things up. But the final nail in the coffin seems to be her start of a new movement on June 21st, where she takes pot shots about the far left and the far right. She even said, as, quote, fuck the Bible thumpers in the video when the previous day she tweeted this. All right, y'all. So me and you, we're the normies. We are the fucking normal people. We're the ones who built this damn country. And we have these fringes on the far right. And we have the fringes on the far left that they all have their little clubs. They all have their little clicks. They all have their little catchphrases. And they both fucking hate me. They both hate me because I res represent you. Because we're normal. Because I don't want to join your gay club. Because we don't want to be a part of that gay shit. We're just normal people who work and pay taxes and get shit on. The government shits on us. The, le the far right and the far left shits on us. And ultimately no one gives a shit about fixing this country. Because they're so busy. It's a circle jerk. They're so busy 
trying to, you know, appease their own and stay in the good graces of their own and get famous and whatever, that they don't care about America. That's why nothing gets done in this country. As she took a step away from the dissident right after being at AFPAC, she didn't really like it. But ironically, this was literally a day after she had tweeted, this is a Christian country. Interesting. Doesn't really make any sense, does it? Well, ultimately, it's been a trend in the conservative ink for people who are moderately liberal to essentially gain influence in right-wing circles as means to control what is acceptable discourse amongst the right-wing establishment. Lauren Southern, Ashley St. Clair, and now Lily Gaddis are all single mothers who gain favor amongst their right-wing audiences just to turn on them after being called mean names by anonymous Twitter accounts. In conclusion, uh, if there's one thing to take away from this, the enemy of your enemy is not always your friend. These these dissident right figures, these dissident right figures who didn't like the people canceling Lily Gaddis also ended up not liking Lily Gaddis and ended up pushing her out of the space that she was supposed to occupy. At this point in time, she's already fallen off. Nobody cares about her anymore, but I think it's just a little interesting story that I saw took place. And um, yeah, that's about it. All right, see ya.